live like this. Hey everybody, I'm Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. We know there's a lot going on in this world today, a lot to get you down, a lot to drag you into the doldrums, to really affect our mental state. We gotta rise above that. How's one way we can do it? Self-sufficiency, that's the key. Being as outside of the system as possible. Frugality, upcycling, recycling, MacGyvering is what I call it, or rednecking stuff. Not throwing away stuff just because it has a hole in it. Mending it, repairing it, like our ancestors used to do. <laughs> That's what they used to do. My grandmother, Ziploc bags, um, bread bags, any plastic bag like that, she would wash them and reuse them. They wasn't like they were super poor or anything like that. You know, they, were, they weren't rich. But my mom does the same thing. And she's doing pretty well. We get a, you get a hole in your pants. You throw them away. Hole in your socks. Nobody knows how to darn socks anymore, right? A lot of these little things we don't have to get rid of. You know, the, uh, the rubber edge around your shoe starts to come off. That's what shoe goo is for. Does it last forever? No. But there's a lot of things you can do to make things last longer. I do this all the time because we are not wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. We get by, barely, but we try to stretch things. I try to sacrifice, make sacrifices so that my children and my wife and we can have things that we need. Sacrifice is key. Learning to have that attitude of making sacrifices so that you can do things in other areas. But another aspect of self-sufficiency, of course, is you see, you know, you see around me, I mean blackberry bushes, but you see, you know, a plum tree right there. You see the Jerusalem artichokes right there. Growing a garden. Growing a garden is vital. People say, well, it's too late to garden. No, it's not too late to garden. It's middle of August. Fall garden. If you haven't gardened yet, plant a fall garden. If you are gardening, you probably already know what crops to plant when, stuff like that. I'm still figuring a lot of that out. I'm not a master gardener. I grow a pretty decent garden, but my neighbor across over there, she has the greenest thumb I've ever, ever seen. <laughs> she grows up and they got, they put a lot more money into their setup. I redneck raised beds. I build them out of logs. I build them out of reclaimed lumber. I build them out of a dining room table. I build them out of, you know, leftover metal roofing from our roof that I found behind the shed. I make it out of, you know, all kinds of stuff. Some lumber, um, I, uh, this uh, wine-like uh, stand thing that we, ha that we got free from yard sale site or something like that, tore it apart, rebuilt it into raised beds. Doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Uh, or you can do in-ground gardening. I prefer raised beds just because um, that's what I prefer. But growing as many of your own calories as possible, raising your own animals, having chickens, having ducks, whatever it is you prefer, um, goats, sheep, uh, cows, if you want, if you get the land, a lot of people don't. But even if like you're living in an apartment or something like that, depending on the rules, regulations, and stuff like that, um, and if you eat them, also, people have different dietary constraints. Some people don't eat um, animals with paws, and that's cool, you know, we all have free will, that's great. Um, but you can raise rabbits, like meat rabbits. Um, inside your house. You don't have to have a bunch of property and stuff like that, like for cows or horses or anything else like that. Not that I'm going to eat a horse. Maybe I would, I would if I had to. But um, yeah, it's about making use of what we have. Um, Multi-purposing items. Um, whenever you buy an item, um, and I like thrift stores. I love thrift stores. I always look through thrift stores, the fine tooth comb, to find to see, hey, what can I find that has multiple uses for something that I need or might need in the future. We have to think ahead. We're proactive, not reactive as, pre as preppers because we understand that prepping is living insurance. Um, it's not an end all be all. Just because we prep doesn't mean we'll live, doesn't mean we'll survive. A lot of us will die. It doesn't matter how well prepared we are. You know, Murphy's Law, what can go wrong will go wrong. But 
the more we prepare, the more we set aside food, water, the more we grow our own food, raise our own animals, repurpose our items, make things last as much as possible. Even if you have an old shirt or pants or, or boots or something like that, that, okay, you buy new ones, um, you know, shugoo them up, darn them up, sew them up, repair them, patch them, stuff like that because, and then set them aside for, or use them in your garden or out and about or hiking or out when you're out in the woods, whatever, or put them in a box and just label it as clothing for your preps. That way you have extra clothing. And another nice thing about that is if it's all like darned up, patched up, stuff like that, it looks like you're going through hard times, right? Because it's patched up and stuff, it doesn't look great. When SHTF happens, that's great for gray man. You don't want to be walking around in like brand new tactical pants, you know, brand new Arc'teryx jacket, and all this Gucci gear that fits you properly and really well in SHTF because people will identify that and be like, wow, that dude's like, they got it going on. And because it fits him well, he's well fed. So even stuff that is too big for you now or too small for you, keep it. Because if it's too big, you can wear it and it'll look like you were bigger and you're losing weight because you can't feed yourself. That's a really good aspect of it. And the smaller stuff, because you will lose weight. So then you can probably fit into those. Well, hopefully you won't lose weight. Hopefully you'll be thriving in an SHTF scenario. But that's probably not going to be the case. We probably will be losing weight because, first off, we'll be more active. We'll have to do more. We'll have to go around and you know be much a lot more busy. Um, and, you know, we'll have to be mindful of our caloric intake because we can't just be eating all we want. We would have to take a hard, long, hard look at, you know, how many calories do I need in a day? And then kind of monitor our weight and everything like that to make sure that we're getting proper nutrition, but that we're not just burning through our food storage or the food we're growing too quickly. Now, hopefully we're in a Thrive situation where we don't have to do, be hardcore about that, but... The more self-sufficient we can, the more things we can do for ourselves, the more things we can, more repairs we can do on our vehicle, the more repairs we can do on our home, the more gardening we can do, the more all the different things that we can do that are outside the system to take care of ourselves. I like that because I am not going to a camp. I will not be calling the government for help. Um, yeah, no, I'll be calling tribe for help. <laughs> or neighbors, or friends, or family. But no, the government's not gonna help you. Just not. Look at Hurricane Katrina. That was a big old mess down there, right? Lessons learned, right? But people forget about that stuff. They lull back into the norm, and then they just go about their business of consume, 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 consume. Even simple things, like I talked about repurposing that wine hutch. That's what it is, like a wine hutch. Um, it was really nice wood. I uh, repurposed the top of it from some raised beds, built a bench out of the other part, and it became like a workbench. Awesome. I took out some of the shelves, used those for different things. But anything that you're getting rid of like that, like furniture or whatever, pull all the screws, the nuts, the bolts, the um, all that kind of stuff off of it that you can, the hinges. Any part or piece that you think you might need, throw it in a box. I call it like the man box because it's like by doing man things around here, I find stuff all the time. If I need a screw, a nut, a bolt, whatever, hinges like I said, I just go to that box, I dig through it, and I find what I need, and I repurpose it, and I use it for a lot of different things. It saves a bunch of money and makes it a lot easier. But anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up, share the videos, comment below. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.